And the other cool thing, this is something I was going to ask you about too, was that everything just clicked into place every time. You go to a radio station and who's going to take you on with no zero radio experience, zero really any type of this type of experience but everything just click 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 that's i guess the question to you did you find that as well that once you found your way i guess or a part of the journey or the beginning of the journey of another journey did you find that it all clicked in or was there challenges along the way or well i would say um yeah, like for me, I, my my sense is that when when you're in that flow of synchronicity and things are just always coming to you, always happening, you know, you know, you're on the right path. Then, yeah. You know, and but of course there there were challenges at the same time. So for me, I think they, it goes hand in hand. You know, I think as you move into that place where everything is sort of a, an ecstatic synchronistic flow to get there, often you're moving through, you know, uh, condition patterns or barriers or, you know, whatever whatever has been keeping you from being there. So I think um, the two go hand in hand. I think there are always challenges and, you know, anything I think that's worth doing, it's like you, you move through something in order to give birth, you know, it's mm-hmm. like the, the birthing process is, is often difficult. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a big push. There's a lot of work involved and and uh you know it can be messy <laughs> yeah <laughs> raw <laughs> yeah yeah so you know for me like the first film there was a lot more um moving through my own inertia and this uh second one that i'm working on now has really become a synchronistic play of of everything in my life and like it, it's incredible how the what I put out with the first film has now come back. So um, other people are getting involved with this other film, and it, and it's really exciting. So I have people like um, Deva Pramal, you know, um, allowing me to use her beautiful music, and and uh, Cameron Gray, uh, who's a, uh, an amazing visual artist, uh, has contributed his artwork, and and um, just all kinds of amazing things connections that have come out of the the first film so i I think it really builds as as you you know really stay with what excites you you know at least in my experience so far um it it seems to be like a a cumulative effect and Mm -hmm. my initial inertia with the first film has mostly been overcome so now i'm just kind of riding off that wave now (laughs) i bet now for you was there any kind of like i think for myself there was those couple of visions before even anything kind of clicked was there any visions for you to uh, start the doc was anything there before to kind of be the the guiding hand or yeah um now that you mention it it's funny how it started like the meditation that we do here at breathe through yoga like i i usually do teachings and and i was i was creating a powerpoint presentation just to teach a lot of this stuff and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger mm-hmm. and, and and just developed into the film basically but before that i did have sort of a vision i've, I've had different experiences in my meditation and i had one vision where it was literally like a, an actual vision where something appeared in front of me and it was a spiral almost like a dna kind of spiral and it was going into a padlock and out of the padlock um, was a, a bright light and it was it was a strange thing i don't normally have those types of um really visual kind of things appearing like it was it was during the day and you know sometimes at meditation retreats there's all kinds of visual phenomena that will come up but this was almost like um somebody interrupting the regular programming and saying you know we interrupt this broadcast for a special (laughs) bulletin kind of thing so to me that viral that vision has has sat with me for for many many years and i think it's sort of informed the film and it's it's not like i ever you know really had any sense of myself as a filmmaker or wanting to create a film in particular but but i think that you know expressing that and the meaning of that and and just exploring it getting to the bottom of it not that i have gotten to the bottom mm-hmm. of it but that's the thing like when i started all this exploration I, I thought i knew a little bit about some of this stuff and and now it's like i know what i don't know <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah and, 
and it's an endless rabbit hole with no bottom. So, so now I, I, you know, I know less than when I started, but, but <laughs> it's been a great trip. <laughs> yeah. As I get older, that thought keeps hitting me all the time too. You know, it's when you're young, it's like you think you know everything, but the older you get, the more you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, same kind of thing. And we're sitting here this morning talking with Daniel Schmidt. He did the amazing documentary, Inner Worlds, Outer Worlds. He's a meditation teacher and had his own music publishing company. Or do you still run REM? Uh, well, REM is um, now just uh, creating these films, basically. Right, cool. So the, the music publishing part of it has been, been sold off, so... Right. Well, I tell you, it's a good trade-off. <laughs> yeah, it, energetically, it was a it was a big shift for me to to let go of that and to I bet. do this. So. Yeah. Now, the one thing that kept coming to me as I rewatched all four, because you know, they come in. For those who don't know, they come in half an hour parts or episodes. After watching all four again, what really sprang to mind was. How the heck did he decide what concepts to put in here? Because there's so many. And I wanted to make sure that I said this to you because I, you know, I've seen in the course of doing the show, I've watched a lot of documentaries. I've listened to a lot of audio of different, you know, people still here, some passed on. And the way that you've done it, it's so succinct, so open and so heartfelt and just so easy to understand. You did it in such a way that it wasn't like hoity-toity or, you know, some people kind of get errors. I don't know whether that was, I don't think it was you narrating, was it? No, uh, yeah. that was uh, Patrick Sweeney. Right, yeah, same guy that's going to be in, in your new one. Yes. Yeah, what a great voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's great. I, I listened to a lot of voices to pick him. Yeah, I bet. And so, yes, yeah, how did you decide what concepts to put into the into the entire documentary? Yeah, well, it's it, it was an interesting process for me because um, coming from a television background, everything that I was used to doing is very scripted, and you have you know like storyboards, and it's almost like a formula of you know creating a TV show. And um, this was the exact opposite. This was more me doing my meditation. I would I would do like every every day, every morning I do my meditation and then I would sit and, and write for a little while and, and after a period of time I came up with hundreds of pages of writing. And then I just started building little pieces, basically. And I came actually came up with about five hours worth of stuff that I that I felt like I wanted to express and it's just this process of going over it and over it and just piecing it together bit by bit and playing with music, playing with images, and sometimes an image would take it in one direction and sometimes a piece of music would take it in another direction. So it was a lot of just exploration. You know, I, I think of it as, you know, those branching patterns in the in the one, you know, the Lee patterns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, like part of the, the process of exploring was like branching. It was like going, you know, out in one direction and sometimes it would be a dead end and I would have to cut that branch off. You know, for example, like I was really trying to find a way to do an in-depth exploration of Buckminster Fuller's vector equilibrium, which I find fascinating. But everybody I showed it to said, you're losing me here. Like, this is this is just, you know, everything up to this point was good, but then, you know, this is just, I, I just can't do it. So I had to cut it out because it just uh, was it was interrupting the flow. So there's there's sort of a flow that you know, and part of part of my process is to um, do rough screeners for people and to just see how it's working and actually get feedback from people. And my wife was a big part of that process as well. She's probably seen it more than anybody. So. Yeah, I bet. And it is always good to have that other voice to kind of ground and then to help choose what flows better and then even better that it's a woman yeah yeah and and uh, you know we're we're fortunate here we have people coming to our center as well and you know different groups of people and we have one group that i'm a part of called the universal brotherhood and it's a bunch of guys that are you know in into sort of an evolutionary sort of exploration of of what life is all about and they come up and and you know it's great they they just if if they don't like something they just tell me and you know there's there's a a lot of people that are in my life that can just 
just be honest with me about mm-hmm. uh, about what I'm doing and whether it's working. So that feedback is really valuable for the process. And, yeah, so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't have just a bunch of yes people around because then you, God knows where it'll end up. Yeah, yeah, and and it's funny. Like when I when I look at it, you know, if, sometimes when you're deep in the weeds, you don't really mm-hmm. see what's going on. Like I'll be I'll be so focused on the details and the music. It's like you almost have to put on different hats for yeah. for different parts of the process. So some days I have my composer hat on, and then other days it's you know I'm I'm just writing, or or I have to look at it in the big picture. You know, watching it as an audience person would. So. Yeah. Now, this is kind of an roundabout way to ask you a question, but I tend to do that. When I traveled with uh, Billy, Uncle Billy, as a lot of people knew him, Billy Mesa, he went all over Western Canada and the States. A lot of different reses and stuff would ask him to come up and do. He was one of the very few actually trained sweat lodge leaders. For instance, his last initiation before he became a sweat lodge leader was... They had 78 stones, and I don't mean like granite stones, I mean like the actual volcanic rocks, which is the way if you're going to sweat, that's what you use. And they get much hotter and hold the heat longer. So they had 78 in, you know, the uh, the pit in the middle of the sweat lodge. And then instead of having a doorway or a flap, they did only one doorway, and that was filled with rocks. And so he had to wait in there until the rocks were cool enough that he could push himself out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't hear about that anymore these days. But in being with him, I was so in the now that nowadays, when I look back on some of those times, it's really hard to remember. Because I found, anyway, that when you're in the now, you're not thinking about, okay, I need to remember this, I need to, like, take a picture, do this, do that, whatever. It was just, you're just experiencing it freshly just there mm-hmm. in the now and i'm i'm wondering if if that can sometimes be troublesome or challenging or whether you found a way around that or use it in a different way being in the now yeah well i wouldn't say it would ever be troublesome like for me actually that's kind of like a, a nice uh, segue into the concept of samadhi which i'm exploring in the next film because uh, samadhi is is really um it's a, a sanskrit word that means union and it's really you know the state of being in the now it's not sometimes people you know in meditation and in different traditions they see samadhi as some altered state of consciousness or some some really high state of consciousness but it's actually our normal state of consciousness Mm -hmm. it's it's just us being here now fully collected in the moment so it's it's just our, our normal natural state unmediated by thoughts that are constantly pulling us out into the future or Or the past the the past yeah so so being in the now like for me the the meditation is so key to what i'm doing because it's what really grounds me in the now like my my nature is to be you know i'm a very i'm kind of um in the ayurvedic tradition I, i would be like a vata type i'm i'm very thin and you know fast moving thoughts things move through me really quickly a lot of creativity but then I, I lose it very quickly and can easily get ungrounded so so for me my my challenge is to become grounded in the now and in, in the moment you know so the meditation is is the key and without that I start to get lost basically mm-hmm. yeah so 